Today I'm going back under the layout because I've got some wiring to do. That's coming right up. I'm Roy Smith. We model railroaders often like to rehabilitate areas of our layouts. And when we change the track arrangement in an area of our layout, guess what? We also have to change the wiring under the layout. Well, that is what is going on at the Evanston and Granger Junction area of my layout, which I am renovating. So I want you to come under the layout with me today. I'm going to show you how I am redoing the wiring there in response to the renovations I'm making on top of the layout. This is not a how to do it video. Rather, it's a how I did it video. There are other ways to do your wiring and how you do it is a matter of personal preference. But wiring is a task that should never be hurried because if you try to do it quickly, you might make a mistake that will lead to enormous electrical problems. As you go, label your wiring on a track plan, on the layout itself, on the wires, and at the connections for the wires. You will see me doing this today. Before going under the layout though, I want to remind you that I upload Dispatch, the weekly show for model railroaders on Tuesday nights and layout updates on Saturdays. So don't miss out. Subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now, as I said, we're going under the layout to do some wiring, but let's wait for this westbound big blow turbine to pass through Granger Junction and Evanston first. A long time ago, AZ Mike posted a comment on one of my videos and his comment portended the future. Mike wrote, can you do a video about the underside of your layout? That is how you run, organize and label your wiring. Do you light the underside of your layout for easy access for work or troubleshooting? And do you do a lot of soldering or heat shrink in your wiring connections? In response, I said to Mike, yes, I can do a video about wiring and other stuff under the layout. In fact, redoing the wiring under my layout is a priority. It has become a little chaotic as a result of changes in the track work. Mike, are you out there somewhere watching this? Do you remember our correspondence? It has taken me a long time but I'm finally doing exactly what you and I talked about. In my last layout update, I affixed a strip of wood to the bench work under the layout on which I will place my wiring components. And I installed LED lighting under the layout so that I can see what I'm doing under there. I will put a link to that layout update down below in the description to this video so that you can go watch it if you haven't seen it yet. Everywhere you look, you see wires hanging down under my layout, both drop feeders and turnout wires. Some of these wires have been hanging down under there for years because I never got around to connecting them. Others are from the recent changes in the track arrangement at Evanston. Either way, I'm connecting all of them now, and I've got a lot of work to do. We are going to start here with the wiring in the Granger Junction area. I've numbered the drop feeders on this part of my track plan from one to nine. Drop feeders one through four go to tracks in this corner of my Western Helix under the peninsula where Evanston and Granger Junction are located. And I've numbered the drop feeders on the layout itself. The ones at this corner on the first level of the Western Helix are numbered one and two. Level two feeders are numbered three and four. There are multiple drop feeders on each level of the helix, 
But for now, we're only working with the ones at this corner of the helix. And here on top of the layout, the drop feeders are numbered five and six. This leg of the junction at Granger is numbered seven. And this one, number eight. I'm including the feeders for the Evanston Yard lead in this group as number nine, because it is close to the other drop feeders in this area. Here from the side of the layout, you can see how I attached drop feeders to terminal barrier strips under the layout in the past. In turn, the barrier strips were attached to the layout bus wires. It was a little difficult to see and to reach under there to make these connections. Now here's that strip of wood I installed on the bench work during my last layout update. It's where I will be putting my electrical components. I can sit comfortably in a chair to do the wiring and I can see and reach it easily. Uh, by the way, I called it a 1x3 in my last update. Actually, it's a 1x2. Now I've installed terminal barrier strips. I will be connecting the drop feeders and layout bus wires for this part of my layout to them. I'm going to number each of the terminals using this label maker. And here you can see that I've numbered each of the terminals from one through nine. There are two sets of terminals, one for the white wires and one for the blue wires. You'll recall that I numbered each set of drop feeders when I installed them on the track. Now I'm installing spade connectors on the drop feeders. And next I'm connecting the drop feeders to the designated spot on the terminal barrier strips. There, I've made a lot of progress with the drop feeders. It may be a little hard to see, but feeders number one just barely reach the new barrier strip location. Meanwhile, two, three, and four don't reach it at all and are not yet connected. This is because feeders two, three, and four were cut to reach the barrier strip at its previous location under the layout. And now they don't reach the new location, which is further away. You can see feeders two, three, and four just hanging there, waiting to be connected. I will have to make these feeders longer by splicing a length of 22 gauge wire to them. I've got my handy dandy soldering iron to do this. But the shrink tubing I ordered to cover the splices still hasn't arrived. I also ordered liquid electrical tape that can be used to cover the solder splices. I may not use it, but I ordered it just to see what it's like. If you've ever used it, let me know what you think of it in the comments section down below. I've still got to install the wiring for the west end of Echo Canyon here. and the west end of Evanston and the east end of Echo Canyon over here. And I really want to install the rest of those 12 switch cats for the turnouts in my staging yard so that I can throw the turnouts there remotely using my throttle. I talked about the switch cats and began to install them some time ago in a video called How to Install and Program NCE Switch Cats. I will put a link to that video down below. In the meantime, I've already got enough connections to be able to run trains through the Granger Junction area. Let's go topside and I will show you using two SD40-2s running light.
there you have it. I've made some progress with the wiring, but I've still got a lot to do and I will be doing most of it off camera. We model railroaders often say that we hate to do wiring. Nonetheless, it can be a satisfying task if we take our time when doing it, if we do it neatly, and if it works when we're done. Okay, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done it yet. And click over here to watch more videos. I'm Roy Smith. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you. Until next time, happy railroading.